what's going on people? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host Jan. I hope you are all doing well today and welcome to today's video which is me talking about Frank Lampard's Chelsea rebuild. Now I say rebuild, really Chelsea just need a few alterations to probably be on the right direction or on the right course of where they want to be going. Sure Chelsea have problems but they have a lot of positives in this current crop of players and really I think a big problem with Frank Lampard's Chelsea is lack of development. He's shaking down what he wants to do. He's got a bunch of new young players and I think they'd probably all benefit from more coaching, which is great. But Chelsea need new players in certain positions. You can't escape that whichever way you look at it. I've spoken on the channel before how Chelsea had intended on doing a really, really big rebuild prior to the pandemic. And even though everything's changed of late they'll still be looking to bring in new players so i wanted to do a video to talk about what did chelsea or rather who did chelsea need to buy of course my series that i do on football therapy chelsea news brings you the latest news and headlines regarding chelsea football club but this video is an actual assessment of the current Chelsea squad starting 11 who needs to be upgraded what are the options and I'm going to give you my opinion and more importantly I want to hear your opinions on what I say down in the comment section below so the way we're going to do it I'm going to pick the sort of three or four problem positions in my opinion and talk about realistic transfers and who could be more likely to join Frank Lampard at Stamford Bridge to play for the Blues. So quick shout out if you enjoy daily Chelsea Football Club content why not subscribe to Football Therapy as I do upload daily hey sometimes even twice so please do sub hit the bell notifications icon because that is important and if you want to support your brother like the video man all right let's get into it. So problem positions for Frank Lampard's Chelsea. Let's start at the back. Now, I am one of those people that think Chelsea are fine to continue on with Kepa Aretha Balaga. Kepa himself has recently come out and said he believes he has Frank Lampard's trust and he understands everything that's happened. Great. Um, he is a talented goalkeeper. We've seen him pull off good saves. We know he's very good with his feet uh, naturally in terms of talent. But his form dropped off a cliff and he was worryingly bad. Where Chelsea are with Kepa, Rita Balaga, I'm not so sure because behind the scenes, Frank Lampard could still be, he could be saying stuff like, look man, I brought him back in, yes, he had a couple of good games, but to be honest, if I'm going to build this Chelsea side to compete with Liverpool and City, I need a goalkeeper that doesn't drop form. He could think that, and if that's the case, Chelsea have been looking at Andre or Nana of Ajax, a very, very good goalkeeper that could cost around 30, 35 million pounds, which obviously is less than half of Kepa Ruta Balaga, but he's very highly rated indeed. Also, Gianluigi Donnarumma of Milan, it Italy's number one, I think now. He's excellent. He's been around for a long, long time and is very young, very, very big and imposing in the goal. He would also be an excellent option and very marketable as well. Huge name already at such a young age, Donnarumma. But for me, I'd go for Andre Onana if I was Frank Lampard. But it's important to know if you want my personal opinion, I would save the money and bolster elsewhere around the pitch and I'd just buy a second goalkeeper to replace Willy Caballero who's out of contract and also is very old indeed. So I'd go for a second goalkeeper who can come in and deputise for Kepa if he drops off and really give Kepa one more chance to mature into Chelsea's starting goalkeeper. Next up, and this one's probably the most obvious, left back. I've done videos before where I've talked about how Chelsea can generate really good funds from selling the likes of both Emerson Palmieri and Marcos Alonso. Chelsea do have Ian Matson, who's recently signed a new deal, who could deputise as the second choice left back at Chelsea. But if Frank Lampard wants to play his progressive, forward-thinking modern football, He's going to need a left back that's similar to his current right back, Rhys James. A dynamic and fast person who can get up and down the left flank and combine well. The three most obvious options would probably be Alex Tellez of Porto, who Chelsea had opened negotiations with a long time ago. They've been looking at Tellez for a long, long time indeed. Years, in fact. And he's in his sort of prime late 20s now, mid-late 20s, and he should be able to drop straight into the Chelsea team and perform. He matches the player profile, 
He's very good. He's an offensive fullback. He's got a good engine. But Porto wanted to play hardball with him and they might be able to squeeze more money out of PSG. So we'll have to see what happens there. That's a long-term Chelsea target. But it's been rumoured that a primary Frank Lampard target is of course Ben Chilwell of Leicester. Leicester have a lot of money. They won't need to sell Chilwell. He'll, to be honest, he'll probably only go if he puts in a transfer request to join Frank Lampard's Merry Blues. He is talented. He's England's starting left back, but he's since, I don't know, maybe winter, his form dropped off a cliff and everyone was really concerned with how badly he was playing. And Leicester fans themselves were like, yeah, sell him, sell him to Chelsea. If we're selling Harry Maguire out here for 85 million pounds, we can mug Chelsea off, I don't know, 50, 60, 70 million plus. Uh, for Ben Chilwell. That's worrying as a Chelsea fan, but if Frank Lampard looks past recent form and says, look, he is the type of player I want playing left back for me, then maybe you just go for Ben Chilwell. I'm not so sure this is the most realistic target now, even though I think it probably would be wanted by the club, purely because of the finances, the pandemic, how it's broken down the financial climate, how much money it costs, and Leicester don't need to sell him. So probably is looking less and less likely. Alex Tellez is probably more likely, and another realistic target at left back, of course, would be Robin Gosens of Atalanta. Primarily a left wing back, but also can play left back comfortably. Gosens is, like Marcus Alonso in many ways, got the offensive attributes of Marcus Alonso, but unlike Marcus Alonso, he can defend and get up and down the flank a lot, lot better, which would be very interesting or for Chelsea fans and of course Frank Lampard. Frank Lampard does like to play a free back system with wing backs and rely maybe on that left wing back role so getting Gosens in would be a massive positive but he could also rely on him to play left back so realistically that could be a really cheap option maybe about 25 million pounds who knows maybe Gosens is the one for Chelsea. Next up, let's talk centre forwards. Now, of course, for the longest time, Chelsea was linked with Moussa Dembele. Frank Lampard even commented how he is thinking of him back in January. It does look like Moussa Dembele might be edging closer and closer to Manchester United. Of course, they play Anthony Martial up in the centre forward position, who scored some goals, had problems of injuries, but never really exploded as the centre forward. And Marcus Rashford is absolutely dominating and owning that left flank. No one's going to take that off him. So Martial really, if he doesn't score the goals, Manchester United are going to look for another striker. I don't think they're going to keep Oli and Agalu. I think they might get Moussa Dembele, to be honest. And where does that leave Chelsea? Well, Chelsea have been looking at a couple of centre forwards. One being Victor Ossimhem. I actually prefer Ossimhem to Moussa Dembele. He's scored a bit more, he's a little bit younger. He looks more exciting. They both play in league. Uh, obviously, Moussa Dembele plays for Lyon. Ossimhem plays for Lille, which is a less sort of creative team in many ways. He's got, he hasn't got as good players around him, yet he's scoring great amounts of goals and assists. I think Ossimhem would be the perfect backup striker to keep Tammy Abraham on his toes and who knows, maybe even take that first team spot. Another option of course is Dries Mertens on a free, but I've spoken before on a previous video how it does look like for the player Dries it makes a lot more sense to get a long term deal at Inter Milan, stay in Italy and play with his countryman Romelu Lukaku. Chelsea have been linked with a multitude of strikers but strikers come at a premium and it's risky business buying strikers for the Premier League. So that's another one we're going to have to keep tabs on but I really like the idea of Victor Ossimhem personally. Finally, a winger slash attacking midfielder, a creative floating wide forward. I genuinely do think Mason Mount's going to stay in the midfield. I don't think he's going to play left wing again. I think he can play a cam. Um, I think Frank Lampard likes Ross Barkley and probably will keep him. So I think a wide forward, more so rather than an attacking midfielder, will be targeted for the Chelsea first team. For me, Hakim Ziyech will occupy the right wing position and maybe he can cut inside and move inside to the number 10 as well. But generally, the right wing. I also think Christian Pulisic will have a massive of shout to dominate that left wing position again and Callum Hudson-Odoi will be rotating and trying to muscle his way into the team. I didn't think it was realistic when Chelsea were going to sign Jadon Sancho after Hakim Ziyech because really Ziyech is going to take that right wing not necessarily Jadon Sancho in my opinion so really this winger that needs to be purchased needs to be a rotational winger and of course Chelsea have been linked with a bunch of wingers 
different sort of level of quality, but the one that makes most sense to be a rotational winger to just have his chance to muscle his way into the first team in a difficult financial climate, of course, would have to be Jeremy Boga. Jeremy Boga, once of Chelsea, young Frenchman, very, very talented and tricky winger, scored some great goals in Serie A this season, some wonder goals in fact, carries the ball magnificently, he's got more dribbles than Neymar this season, and in fact, he's only got just a few less dribbles than Lionel Messi this season in Europe. Jeremy Vogel is incredibly exciting, Chelsea can buy him back for £12 million. That for me is the perfect player profile to be a rotational winger if you can convince the player to come back to Chelsea, sign a contract and play that role. So look, you'll be given the chance if you play really well, you can start. But for now, you've got to get limited game time, you know, limited minutes. Would the player accept that? I'm not so sure. And really, for the winger position, that's going to be the problem with most players. Because I do genuinely think Chelsea have their starting wingers and their biggest problem position would probably be rotational striker starting left back. Anyway, what do you guys think? I want to get your thoughts and opinions on the positions I've spoken about in today's video and the players as well. I'm trying to be realistic in troubling financial times, in uncertain times in the world of football. So bearing that in mind, let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comment section below. And if you've enjoyed the content today, please do like the video. That means a lot. Subscribe to Football Therapy if you're new. Go support my second channel, Jan's Yard. Link in the top of the description. That is it from me, you lot. Enjoy the football that's not happening yet. And I'll see you later. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck. I'ma get it how I'm living. I'ma walk the walk. Outline my lines. I rap through thought. Body bag the verse. Outline the chuck. In my life seen trouble, hustle on the double Silence on the trigger like my pick got a muzzle Yo chick like to guzzle, bad boy stay in trouble I only love this paper, sorry I don't I love me,